months ago, a friend whose political analysis I respect, yeah, because it usually comes to pass, uttered the following words. He, BBI, hakuna mali inaenda. My response, wewe, haujui Raila Odinga. Had it been any other politician you can think of in Kenya, I would have agreed with my friend on the spot. Raila Odinga is just Raila Odinga. How many times has all been lost? And then at the 11th hour, at the very last minute, Bwana Odinga pulls out a rabbit from the heart. You don't make sweeping statements about Raila Odinga. Remember the people during the 2017 elections who were very sure that somebody was going to bondo for good. <laughs> they have egg on their face now. My point is, if you don't want to be reckless, yeah, to play it safe, anything to do with Raila Odinga, yeah, you take it easy. <laughs> no sweeping statements. No sweeping predictions. I needed to say that. I needed to start with that because of what I'm about to say on today's show. So that I remind you that yes, I get it. Indeed, I get it. But having said that, it is also important to realize that what we are going through as a country right now, many of the things we are going through are in fact unprecedented. So, on to the reasons why I believe that the BBI is doomed. Reason number one, the very short memories of Kenyans. Some would call it selective amnesia. Selective amnesia is where you choose what to remember and you choose what not to remember. Today, very few Kenyans want to remember the whole reason, the whole circumstances under which the BBI was birthed. The country was on edge. The country was on the verge of civil war. Losing an election, any election, is devastating enough. And so, you cannot even begin to imagine what it feels when that election is stolen from you. You win, but the loser is declared winner. A gallant Kenyan hero called Raila Odinga put all that behind him. I don't know how. Yeah. And embraced a Building Bridges initiative where he would accept the results of an election stolen from him in broad daylight when everybody was seeing. In other words, Raila saved businesses, Raila saved lives, Raila saved the country, and that is a fact. But barely two years later, those Kenyans who are saved from a very ugly situation are saying the following, Raila is building bridges where there's absolutely no need for bridges etc etc that is kenyans for you and i guess kenyans are as human as they come this grief-stricken man was lost his wife is bombarded by his screaming children his little children even as he's trying to cope with his very sudden loss and he approaches this lady and tells her I know I broke your heart. I should have married you. But I know I hurt you very much. But now I'm in a bad situation. I want to marry you. Please help me. It's only you I can trust 
to be by my side, to look after my children. And she promptly resigns from a very good job in another very far away town. And she immediately comes to the aid of this man because she has always loved him. And that family stabilizes. Happiness returns. The children are also happy. The man is overjoyed. Two short years later, when everything is okay, the crisis has passed, the man swaggers into the sitting room with his pot belly and tells her, you can leave when you want. The door is wide open. The same door you used to come in, you can use to leave. I don't even know what mitishamba you used to end up inside my house. I have no idea. But you must have a very powerful witch doctor working for you. What? This man has forgotten. <laughs> this man has forgotten that there's no witch doctor who brought this woman into the house. It is himself who went to look for her. Messed up her life. She had to resign from her job. She now has no other source of income. Wasted two years of this woman's life. You know, wasting the months of a woman's life is very serious. She'd have met somebody during that time. Somebody more human than you. Somebody who does not suffer from selective amnesia. But uh, that is human nature. People conveniently forget. And this is not the first time that people have conveniently forgotten. And neither will it be the last. Reason number two why I think the BBI is doomed. The circumstances have changed way too dramatically. I believe historians analyzing this period will note that the period between 2017 and 2020 represented the steepest learning curve for Kenyan voters in history. The Kenyan voter had heard of the word corruption many times before, but very few understood the rampant robbery of the Kenyan people and finances of the Kenyan people. Very few understood the organized thuggery that had absolutely no time to think of the consequences on vulnerable small children going to bed hungry in the country called Kenya. Kenyans discovered that even those we trust very much amongst our politicians amongst the political class may be the worst when it comes to siphoning off public funds. Kenyans graduated from analyzing public meetings and how many people attended and how many people cheered and what they were saying to analyzing the end game in any political move. They graduated into asking the right questions. What is the end game here? Who will benefit? Follow the money, etc., etc. The Kenyan voter moved away from that situation where he was always being told, sign here. And he or she signs without reading the small print, without even thinking to that very scary place for the political class where they're told sign here and they say, I am not signing because I already know where this is going. Ay, yeah, 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 yeah. That has already put the BBI thing in very serious trouble because people are saying, you're going to create more positions? This is more Buanacubas? more finances, more outlets for corruption, more outlets for siphoning off public funds. Hell 
no. The rapid education of the Kenyan voter is of course still not complete. Yeah, because there's a trick which still works. At least on some. Yeah, and it has to do with tribal, powerful tribal demons. Who is this opposing the BBI? What tribe do they come from? What political camp do they come from? Yeah, because if Kenyans had already graduated past this very stubborn roadblock, then months ago, we would all have unanimously passed the Punguza Mizigo initiative. Yeah, without stopping to think where it came from or who may be financing it. We would have instead hijacked the whole thing. Yeah, and it would have become our own. But alas, we lost that golden opportunity. Reason number three why the BBA is in trouble is structural in nature. In other words, the BBI has worked very hard yeah, and very admirably against the symptoms of the disease. But the BBI has failed to address the disease itself. Now it is very important that you understand that this was not a deliberate mistake. You see, the disease at the time could not be addressed. It was not politically viable to directly address the disease and have a BBI initiative. So what was the disease? The disease was a stolen election. Period. That disease opened up old wounds. Old wounds of historical injustices, old wounds of tribalism, etc., etc. All those were symptoms. But the disease was a stolen election. And so the simple solution yeah, was to ensure that no other election in Kenya again would be stolen. Period. But how do you do that when you're negotiating with the people who actually stole the election? Impossible. However, a couple of years later, a couple of months later, that disease starts to rear its head. And it is so visible, so nagging, yeah, that it makes the whole BBI proposals look like a joke beating about the bush, walking on the fringes, while carefully avoiding the epicenter of the whole problem, the epicenter of the disease, stealing elections. And so people start asking, how can we stop the stealing of elections? By creating more posts. How? By trying to make it less painful for the person who the election is stolen from? Fighting corruption is good. In fact, it is critical. Yeah. But how will that stop future elections from being stolen? That major structural defect in the BBI has doomed it. Reason number four why the BBI is in trouble. Economics. When you hear some Kenyans say that it is time to stop political activism, and replace it with economic activism. Then you know, if you're in the political class, you're in serious trouble. And that one also puts the BBI in serious crisis. Because it has become crystal clear to Kenyans that past the BBI, you'll economically and financially benefit a handful of Kenyans. But fix the economics at the grassroots. Yeah, make sure people benefit from the resources that are close to them. Remove that situation where people in Nairobi benefit much more from resources on the ground far away from the capital. Remove that scenario and millions of Kenyans will benefit. 
Now economics is a very complex subject. People go to college for years to master it. Finances yeah, are complex. Even simple finances are complex for the vast majority of Kenyans. However, these simple Kenyans are asking themselves some very simple questions. Like this timber in our county yeah, that people are taking away all the time. How are we benefiting? This God-given pot yeah, near my house, how come a vast majority of the employees are not from this county? They are from Bara. Why? How come? Why is it that even the person who opens the gate at the port is from a very far away county? Why? And immediately we have a very serious problem. Because of corruption and other issues, but especially because of corruption, we have structured our government in such a way that revenue collection heavily relies on resources from other counties other than the capital Nairobi. Had we gotten it right at the foundation stage, then we would have been fine. Nairobi would have been fine with a small administrative fee or profit. And the main benefit would have gone to the sources of the resources. Now, unfortunately, you can't fix such things overnight. It takes time yeah, to make the gradual shift into what it should be. But now you don't have time. Yeah, the owners of those resources are in a hurry. Not only that, they want to be repaid what they've lost over the decades. And as more and more Kenyans get into that bandwagon, yeah, the BBI looks like something very insignificant. Yeah, something which will not help them. On to the last reason I'll give today where the BBI is in trouble. At the time the BBI initiative was launched on the stairs of Arambe House, where the office of the president is, in March 2018, both sides of the political divide did not have any serious internal political problems. Jubilee was very much united against Nasser, and Nasser were together and very much united against Jubilee. Immediately that March announcement was made, many things changed both within Jubilee and within Nasser. And we saw simmering political troubles within Nasser very quickly come to the surface. And we saw the same within the Jubilee outfit. Now I hope you realize that for this to have happened, yeah, the players in those political manenos on both sides of the political divide considered the issues more important than the BBI. The result is that today, from where I sit, there are way too many people who have issues that they see must be sorted out yeah, before anybody even starts to think about the BBI. And the result is the political chaos we see all around us at the moment, which makes it very difficult for anybody to imagine how we can even start to save BBI. Until next time, this is Chris Komekuche.